Hello everyone, it's Richard Lewis here again for Deserto, and today's hot take is brought to you by DJ Esports, the world's premier old crypto esports betting site providing real-time odds. So, Group C, the group of death at the ESL Pro League, was super interesting and there was loads to talk about, and as always, I focused on the negative and I did a video talking about evil geniuses and how they should give it up, but not so today. Today, I'm going to talk in glowing positive terms about the team that really surprised me in this group, and that is, of course, Fnatic. Now, if you've not been following what's happened with Fnatic of late, Fnatic plummeted down the world rankings. They couldn't buy a win. They looked absolutely awful. They were entering these online cups, the Snow Sweet Snows and Spring Sweet Springs of the world, and getting beaten by teams that you've never heard of and dominated by players you might never hear of again. Their last outing in ESL Pro League was terrible. They went out in 17th to 20th after losing to Virtus Pro and Astralis. They were just adrift, nowhere. And they've had a number of problems uh, for, a, for a long period of time. Finally, it seems that the Fnatic have committed to trying to fix the problem. But even then, when it was announced that they were going to bring in two UK players, Alex and Mezzi, both of them formerly of Cloud9, which, you know, became a meme in the eyes of many in the community, uh, perhaps unfairly, I think. But it was a little bit underwhelming, the response. People were scratching their heads. And of course, this was their, going to be their first outing. And people really didn't know what to expect. Had they been in a different group, maybe there would be a bit more optimism. But understand, this was a really, really difficult group uh, to get out of for anybody. And for Fnatic to do it with a new lineup at their first attempt, it's a hell of an achievement. And it could have been so much more. Um, let's talk first of all just about the ongoing issues with the team that I think Fnatic are going to have. Uh, their opening series uh, was against Na'Vi, and that was really, really close. A, they lo they lost in overtime on overpass, 22-19. They lost 16-12 on Nuke. Uh, and the bottom line is, why did they lose? They lost because of one poor performance from one player, and it was their AWPA, Giacchino. Obviously, as well, at the other end, you've got Simple, best player in the world, bar none this year. It'll be a travesty if he doesn't win all the awards. I'm sure he's going to. Um, but... Fnatic could have won this series or at least took it to a third map had Giacchino been up to par. Even I tweeted about this publicly saying, you know, might be time to get another AWPA if this is the level of performance you're going to get from him. Now, the good news is if you're Giacchino or a Giacchino fan, or perhaps a Fnatic fan, uh, is that he actually did turn his performances around for the rest of the group and had some big impactful rounds. It was instrumental in them getting through. The next two matches are really where you can start to believe in Fnatic. They beat Big 2-1 uh, and they beat Phase 2-0. Losing to Mouse Sports, an aberration and a blip. And then, of course, you get the freebie against Evil Geniuses. 2-0, uh, very solid performance there against the desperate Evil Geniuses. And um, it's got to be said that Fnatic are looking light years away from the team they were where they fell to, like, 54th or 51st or whatever it was in, in the world rankings. Let's talk about why it's working. I mean, first of all, Alex, uh, he's, a, he's a guy that uh, he doesn't get the respect he deserves. He doesn't get the plaudits uh, because obviously he's in this situation where he played in LDLC. He helped develop them, then moved away, came to Vitality. The meme was, of course, as an in-game leader, you just say, Zewu, go kill. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that, and certainly Alex takes it a lot more serious than that. And then he let his frustrations boil over, which is something you can never do, because once you kind of lash out at the community, they'll taunt you about it forever, because that those are the rules of the internet. And Alex said, look, it's not just about Zewoo, we, we do all this work too. And um, yeah, of course, that became a bit of a meme. But he was right, it was true. Obviously, there has to be a system in place for even the best players in the world to thrive. If it was just about good rosters, you know, we this phase team would have been winning everything, wouldn't it? It's not. It's about getting people into the right roles, having the right tactics that allow everyone to flourish. And, of course, encouraging and motivating all the players to have good performances. 
So Alex is a guy who can do that. He's a very good playbook, IGL. And he's somebody who likes structure. And he's somebody who likes to work with, you know, young players with good attitudes who are chilled out and not going to get stressed. He was a great foil for Ziwoo in that regard and has probably helped him develop as a player. He'll get no credit for that. But again, it remains true. So to see him come into Fnatic with, you know, the only veteran there now is Crims. Crims is still brilliant. Future Hall of Famer. What a glittering career he's had. It's a really solid foundation to build a team on. But Brolan it continues to evolve, continues to develop. He's been fantastic at this tournament. Uh, he's been fantastic at every tournament. In fact, when Fnatic were bad, pretty much the only thing you could really point to and say, look, th there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. The light at the end of the tunnel was Brolan shaped because he's brilliant. He's a fantastic talent, fantastic player, was in the top 20 players. Uh, in the world uh, at one point in his career, I think last year or maybe the year before, you know, for someone so young, already achieved so much. And then, of course, here's what we have to talk about. Messi. For all the people that criticized Cloud9, Cloud9's legacy is going to be that it actually helped develop the careers of a number of players that I believe are going to go on and achieve great things. And Messi might be the true revelation of that project. Uh, he was scouted personally, I believe, by Henry G. A lot of people thought he was a budget pickup because obviously his salary was far less than some of the star, star names on that roster. Mezzi was probably the best value for money pickup the Cloud9 project ever made. And Alex said immediately when he had the opportunity to go to Fnatic, that's the player I want to bring, that's the player I want to work with. A man alive, mezzi has been amazing this tournament. He is gone from playing in like ESEA in, in a mid-table team where Messi, of course, had top three stats despite not even playing, you know, fragging positions to being great on Cloud9 and a real standout. And now he's fragging out on Fnatic and winning incredible clutches. And he just looks like a tier one player from the UK. Think about that. That's mad. <laughs> we suddenly, with Alex, Messi and Smooey are off to the side, you know, one, maybe one day the UK could have five good players. Uh, no disrespect to you guys at end point. You know, this this roster has looked really, really good and has been very good, sol you know, very good tactically. They look to have a number of maps uh, under their belt that I'm looking forward to seeing them play out. Of note, I would say particularly is going to be Overpass. Uh, Overpass seems to be a map that they've already hit the ground running on. I think it's a map that you absolutely need to have in your arsenal uh, at the moment. If you can be a good Overpass team, that seems to put you up. Uh, that seems to give you a great matchup against several of the other top teams in the world. And I know Alex was desperate to make that work at Cloud9, and it had mixed results. But, uh, you know, they've beaten the likes of FaZe on that, of Overtime against Na'Vi on that. You know, these are this is a great way to start. Obviously, as well, they've had great productivity on Mirage. Um, they really looked at one point like they might make it work on Nuke when they were in Cloud9. Um, and certainly, they've had some wins here on it and some losses too. But all in all, they've got a pretty solid map pool coming out the door. So, this is, uh, this is a, a great start for Fnatic. And I want Fnatic to be good again. Fnatic's a legendary organization. Anyone who's been in esports, not you don't even have to have been in it for as long as I have to know how great Fnatic are, to know that the you know the, the scene is better off with a good Fnatic team in it and the Fnatic name, Fnatic brand going to events and Fnatic fans tuning in and supporting them. And I think Alex is the man to lead them back to some semblance of glory. Now, I don't know what form that will take. I think you might have to temper your expectations. It's not going to be the 1.6 Fnatic that were just winning everything, you know, back in 2009 or whatever it was. Uh, it's going to be uh, a Fnatic that's going to be competitive, that's going to mix it up, that's going to make it hard, even for the very best teams in the world. Some, some you'll win, some you'll lose. But you're going to get back to having deep runs at tournaments again. And that starts here. Getting through this group was an incredible achievement in and of itself. Uh, I think people are going to recognize that for what it is. And of course, the team's going to be feeling good. They're going to have a lot of positivity about them. And so moving forward, who's to say what they can do for the rest of this Pro League? We need to wait and see how the other group goes. We've got Group D starting very soon at the time of recording this. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, Fnatic are going to be feeling amazing. They're going to be feeling like they're in the mix. You know, watch this space. I think I think there's a few more twists and turns to the Fnatic story uh, before it's over here in Pro League.